Hi, we're going to have a look at bar-headed geese. These superb birds with their amazingly complex features provide a wonderful example of the necessity of God's hand in their creation. If evolution were the vehicle to bring them into being, they would never have arrived. Sit back now and enjoy this presentation about one of God's masterpieces of creation. Produced and narrated by Barry Cross. Bar-headed geese. The geese breed in Central Asia in colonies of thousands near mountain lakes. It lays three to eight eggs in a ground nest. Adult birds weigh about three kilos and stand around 75 centimetres high. The bird is pale grey and is easily distinguished from any other grey goose by the black bars on its head. The bar-headed goose is one of the world's highest flying birds, having been seen at up to 10,175 metres. It has a slightly larger wing area for its weight than other geese, which would help it for high flying. The geese can fly over Mount Everest. Its upper reaches offer only a third of the oxygen available at sea level, so little that if you could be transported instantly from sea level to Everest's summit without time to acclimatise, you would probably lose consciousness within minutes. <clears throat> Kerosene cannot burn there and helicopters cannot fly there. At 9,000 metres, Mount Everest is high enough to poke into what is known as the jet stream which is a high altitude river of wind that blows at speeds of more than 320 kilometers per hour. Temperatures on the mountain can freeze exposed flesh instantly. Every spring, flocks of bar-headed geese fly from their winter feeding grounds in the lowlands of India. The world's highest altitude migrants fly through and over the Himalayan range, sometimes even directly above Everest, on their way to their nesting grounds in Tibet. By using tailwinds, the geese capitalise on weather that could pulverise lesser creatures. These birds are powerful flappers, not just gliding along with the wind. Their wings have a very large surface area for their weight and are pointed to reduce wind resistance. They can fly over 80 kilometers per hour on their own power. Add the thrust of tail winds of perhaps 160 kilometers per hour and these birds can really move. Able to gauge and correct for drift, these geese can even fly in crosswinds without being blown off course. The same powerful and unremitting flapping that helps propel them over the mountains also generates body heat, which is retained in their down feathers. This heat in turn helps stop ice from building up on their wings. These birds are built for particularly efficient oxygen intake. The avian breathing system is uniquely structured. Among its special features are several sacs that temporarily store the inhaled air that is passed through the lungs and then send it back through the lungs again before it is re-inhaled once more. They have a special type of haemoglobin that absorbs the oxygen very quickly when the birds are flying at high altitudes. As a result, they can extract more oxygen from each breath than any other bird. Once their blood is stocked with oxygen, it rushes through capillaries that penetrate deep into their muscles. Thus energized, their wings flap with seemingly inexhaustible vigor. Not only are these geese an integral part of the ecosystem, but they are also important to science. Researchers believe that with better data 
about the bar-headed resistance to extreme temperatures, they could help humans better cope with altitude and respiratory diseases. Frank Powell, a professor of medicine, quoted, We will never be able to engineer a human lung to work like a bird lung, but with more information we might be able to develop drugs that would help duplicate it some of their cellular responses. How can they survive? Bar headed geese migrate over Mount Everest where oxygen is scarce and life is rare. How do they survive in such conditions? Well, these birds have been designed, fine tuned and programmed to survive and perform for long distances, high flying and very cold conditions. Genesis 120, and God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. What did God do for this bird? Well, a larger wing area for its weight, 6 to 10 percent more aerobic muscle fibre in their wings high density of blood vessels in their flight muscles. Because of the flight muscles, they are powerful flyers. The wings are pointed to reduce wind resistance. They are able to gauge and correct for wind drift. They can fly on course even in very strong crosswinds. And powerful flapping generates body heat. Also, a very unique structural breathing system. They can extract more oxygen from each breath. They can store and then recycle oxygen through the lungs. They can pant for longer periods without restricting blood vessels. Special type of hemoglobin that absorbs oxygen quickly and more capillaries speeding up the exchange of oxygen. Isaiah 14:24. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. Also in Genesis 1.20, And God created after their kind, and every wind fell after his kind, and God saw that it was very good. So now we're going to have a look at mutual Relationships in creation. Mutual relationship. Okay, well the meaning, something performed by each with respect to the other party, an exchange or balance between two or more, indicates an obligation to each other, an interchange or a mutual agreement with each other. Perhaps something like a husband and a wife in their marriage. The yucca moth. There are many mutual relationships between insects and plants. Some of them very unusual indeed. One of these is the yucca moth and the other the yucca plant. They both very much need each other to survive and reproduce. The yucca moth flies to the flower of the yucca plant and collects pollen in a special pouch located in her mouth. The moth then flies to the next flower. She goes to the outside base of that flower and pokes a tiny hole in it to lay her single egg. The moth then flies up to the open flower. She crawls into the flower right down to its base and there stuffs the ball of pollen she had collected earlier in her mouth. Later the plant will produce a great number of seeds. When the moth egg hatches the larvae will eat some of the seeds. The rest of the seeds are not eaten. We will now look at some mutual relationships in the oceans. Coral reefs are found throughout the warmer oceans of the world. The most famous would be a barrier reef. The reefs have been formed by very tiny animals called coral polyps. But the polyps have no bodily systems for getting rid of their wastes nor for extracting oxygen from the water. So they are really in need of help to survive and reproduce. Diagram of the polyp. 
In the body of the polyp is the column forming the trunk, resting on a base or foot and surmounted by the crown of tentacles with the mouth of the polyp in the centre near the top. As a rule, there is no other opening to the body except for the mouth. It is virtually just a big mouth. Living in the bodies of the small polyps are great numbers of even tinier plants. These tiny plants are called algae. Algae appeared six million years ago. These algae plants are absolutely necessary for the survival of the polyps. The algae. The algae also use carbon dioxide that is produced by the polyps. These algae plants absorb the polyps waste and they produce the proteins for the coral polyps to grow. The algae also supply the oxygen the polyps need to exist and reproduce. Without the tiny algae literally living in their bodies, the polyps could not live. Just another example of a mutual relationship working. Some of the most beautiful creations of God can be found along the barrier reef off the east coast of Australia. A picture of more coral. There are literally millions of variations of coral in the world's oceans. Coral polyps must be close to the surface of the sea to live. They need sunlight for themselves and their algae guests to survive. The relationship between the coral polyp and the algae is absolutely necessary for both to survive and grow. This amazing relationship can hardly be explained as a result of evolution over millions of years. What we have seen with the bar-headed geese also could not have possibly happened by evolution. The theory of evolution tells us all living things developed from single living cells over millions of years and this all happened by chance mutations, by processes that no one can really explain. What we have seen is a perfect example of design with no mistakes to allow this bird to do what it does from its very beginning. Mutual relationships. If the mutual relationships were by evolution, both parties would have had to evolve together at the same time and at the same pace. They would not have even survived, let alone reproduce. Just another example of planning, designing and creating by our wonderful God. Design, like we have seen, did not just happen. Everything bears the clear mark of our Creator. The wonders of our world are far better explained by creation. It is God who made the first kinds of plants and animal life. It is He who built into the original genes and chromosomes of his creation, the ability to adapt and change a yet to remain forever the same basic kind. Colossians 1.16 For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things and by him all things consist. And in Job we can read, Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. God also created mankind, but because of the disobedience in the Garden of Eden, Adam lost the personal relationship he had with God. God has given us all the opportunity to regain that relationship with him because of his love for us. He calls it the born again experience available to all. In John 3, 5, Jesus himself spoke and said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit 
is spirit. Verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again, or you must be born from above. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation. We enjoyed doing it for you. If you have any questions or inquiries, you can contact us at therevivalfellowship.com. We welcome anyone who would like to know what is in the Bible, as we believe the Bible is the Word of God. Thank you.